Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today we're going to look at uh, some new changes with Microsoft Dynamics GP. We're also going to discuss a new lifecycle support policy that they've uh, started with the latest release, and then we're going to take a look at some new features in this latest and greatest release. We'll also have uh, some time at the end, hopefully, for some questions. You should see a uh, chat box on your screen. You can post your questions there. My name is Deborah Newcomer. I have been with CSSI for a little over 20 years now, uh, working with GP and pretty much anything related to GP as far as reporting tools, like FRX to Management Reporter, uh, Crystal Reports, SQL Reporting Services, Power BI, um, and many, many third-party products that integrate with GP. And I still learn new things every day. So uh, it's just finding the time to, to learn them. That's the hard part. So speaking of new things, let's take a look at some changes. There's going to be a new name, Microsoft Dynamics GP. No more uh, year as part of the name. So it makes it kind of confusing. So going forward, if we need to see your version number, you can see that when you log into GP on the login screen, there's a version, full version number there. And you can always go to help and about Microsoft Dynamics GP, which is in the upper right-hand corner. This, the name is effective with the latest release, which they're kind of calling the October 2019 release. It changes the full version number to 18.2. That middle section of the version number has always been zero. Uh, there's talk they're going to start using that to indicate the year and month of a release. So we shall see. They've also initiated a new software lifecycle policy with this latest release. And they're calling that the modern lifecycle. Uh, this is the same. Uh, software lifecycle that they use for Office 365 and Azure. So they're just kind of trying to make things consistent across the board. Um, what it boils down to is they are committing to releasing three updates per year. So you'll have a feature update in October. Uh, Mid-year, around June, they're going to update uh, issue uh, like tax updates, bug fixes, throw in some new releases, and then the normal year-end update in November, December. So that's three updates per year. They are encouraging you to stay current by installing at least one update per year. I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of upgrades. We usually wait, wait every few years. But I have to say the upgrades have gotten so much easier over the past several many years. Uh, when I first started working with GP, the upgrades were almost traumatic because you never knew if it was going to succeed or fail. And if it failed, then you're kind of stuck until Microsoft could help you. So I mean, those days are over. It's, we have, we've been doing lots of upgrades, and we really have no issues. Probably the, the worst part about a, an upgrade is the the time involved. If you have many databases and lots of history, it's, it's just pretty much a waiting game. You install the software and just wait for everything to update. But it's so much simpler, so much easier. So it, it's up to you. They say that um, you can see here on my screen that there's five years out. They will support a release for five years. So if you skip a year or two, you know, it's really not that big a deal. The updates are supposed to be all inclusive. So you could jump from one, you know, skip a couple and jump from one to the next year or two years out. So again, it's up to you. I guess it also depends on what new releases. They are issuing a lot more new features with every release. So it's whatever you want to, whatever new release you want to access. So if we look at previous versions, you can see here 
2015. If you're on GP 2015, the uh, mainstream support ends this April. What that means is you'll no longer get program updates. So if you're running payroll or issuing 1099s, anything where a form could change, you won't get those, up, those updates after April if you're on 2015. You're still under extended support, which means Microsoft will still support you if you have an issue and you need to call their support. They'll help you. The main difference is that you just won't get any more program updates. Also, if you're on 2015, you can't jump directly to the latest version, which is 18.2 or just GP. You would have to go from 2015 to either 2016 or 2018 and then up to 18.2. If you're on older versions, like 2013 or 2010, that could involve several jumps. We've been doing um, a few updates lately from some customers that were on 2010, and you have to first be on the latest service pack of 2010 before you can go to the next version number. So again, if you're on 2015 or older, you really should think about updating, get on the new life cycle, get, lots of, get all the new features that are out there. Um, give us a call, we can help you schedule and plan for it. We've got several lined up for the next few months, but be happy to get you on the schedule. Next, we're gonna take a look at new features. Now these are gonna be just what's been added in 18.2. For those of you on older versions that are thinking about upgrading, we have documents that have that list all the new features for the versions in between, 2013, 15, 16, and 18. So just let us know if we can get those to you. So I'm gonna jump into GP, and we're gonna take a look at some of these new features. Get to it. Okay. So um, some system manager or system-wide new releases in SmartList. They've added, am I not sharing my screen? You were sharing the browser. How do I do this? Let me get, get my screen shared here. Take care of a technical difficulty here. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully everybody can see my G GP screen now. So I'm going into Smart List. And they've added a new date value in the search criteria screen. So if we go to, let's say I have a uh, Pables smart list that I look at. I've got one called Open Payables Transactions. And this lists all my unpaid Payables transactions. Now, by the way, you'll see all these weird looking dates because I'm using the sample company Fabricam and they put all their data out in these future years. So that's why I have my system date set to 2024 so I can see data. So anyway, these are all my unpaid transactions. If I go to search and I want to narrow my search down, say by due date. Am I not sharing my screen? Now we're in business. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so back to my smart list. So I'm gonna filter my list on due date. And I have some new values here. You've always had these values up here at the top where you could search on beginning of week, end of week, beginning of period, so on. They've added these new 
the ones at the bottom, these four, prior month, next month, prior period, next period. So now if I want to see just what was due in the prior month, I can include that in my filter. And now my list is shorter, although not short enough. There's a lot of bills out there to be paid. But that way you can uh, just save your smart list using that those date values. And when you refresh, you know you're always going to see last month. You don't have to keep changing dates. A little time saver there. Something else that's new is uh, you can now copy report options. So you know when you go to re print a report, you have to first select the report you want and then what report option. And the whole point of having these options is that you can use different sorts and filters within each option. So you can see that historical age trial balance in many different ways. So you can have a whole list of options. Um, each option, you know, you pick, you pick how you want to sort, uh, vendors or documents in this case, what you want to see, different ranges. So now maybe I want to see this exact same report, but not in detail. So instead of having to clear it and start over and picking all the selections, I can just copy. Now I do have to first start a new name. So if we call this previous month summary, then I can click on copy. This is the new button here. And then I choose which report option I want to copy from. And OK. So it filled in all my selections for me. All I need to do is just change what's going to be different in this report and then save it. So now you'll see back here that I've got a new option from copying. And that copy feature is available in any report option window in Next, for uh, those of you who have admin duties and are responsible for creating new users, there is in the user access window a couple of changes. Uh, one is, if I select the user, this is where you assign a new user to a company. We have some customers who have over 100 companies in GP, so this screen gets full and they're scrolling up and down to find a company. They added a sort, so if it's easier to find a company if you sort it by company name. And then there's also a find. So instead of having to scroll up and down and find the company you want to give this user access to, you can just type in the part of the name and it'll filter the list on that name. Another new uh, field in this window is you can exclude inactive users. If you've got old users that even aren't even with the company anymore, uh, but they've been marked inactive, you can exclude them from this list. Like here's Angela, she's been gone a long time. We just never deleted her user. We don't want it to bog down the screen. You just uncheck that box and you'll see only active users. All right, some things in the financial packages, such as payables. We have in the edit payment batch window. For those of you who use EFT, you come in here and you create a new batch. You have to designate whether it's an EFT batch or not. So you check this box. Oh, and you have to check the right checkbook that is set up for EFT. Make sure I have EFT set and save. So in prior versions, you had to know which vendors were set up as EFT. And if you didn't know off the top of your head, you found out by choosing one and you get this message long-winded message which basically basically says this vendor isn't set up for EFT. Now, <clears throat> it might be a little hard to see on the screen, but there's now an indicator to that shows you which vendors are EFT. So you can easily choose the right ones. Something else new in payables is they've added a new field in payables transaction entry you have this long description field. This will also print on your check stub as well. It, it prints the short description and the long description. 
It's 200 characters, so you can put as much as, uh, as long as a comment as you need, up to 200 characters. And then you can see, if we take a look at one of my invoices here that I created. That field is also available here. If you need to see the whole comment or long transaction or long description, just click on the button with three dots and there's your long comment. That has to be enabled. It's not there by default. There's an option in setup where you enable that long description field. So if you don't need it, don't want to see it anywhere, you don't have to check that box. Another nice thing is uh, GP doesn't do a very good job of showing you who's doing what. There is this thing called activity tracking, which you can enable, which will show you who who has changed a master record, but it doesn't tell you what they've changed. Um, but now they're starting to, to track more of which user is posting and uh, posting batches and posting what they've, they're tracking now is who's posting the journal entry. So if I go into, uh, let's say I'm in looking at an account I have that has a weird balance on my trial balance. And I want to look at last year. So I can see what, there's this credit to this expense account. Where'd that come from? You can drill down. By the way, you know, if you drill down on any of these blue underlined words, they all take you to this same window. But now I can see, if I click on the show details, I can see more information. The first two were bank transactions, but I'm more concerned with this credit. Here's a journal entry. I can drill down to it. Here's that new field. So it shows me who posted that journal entry. Now I gotta go find Brad and see why this was posted. This field is also available in SmartList, so you can go to your financial folder and see I have a SmartList called Journal Entries by Date. And you can see I've added that new column. I could also drill down to that same journal entry by double clicking on it from here. So that's some helpful information. Another little, seems small, but kind of a big deal, should have been here before. If you go into, like the end of every month, what you should be doing is going into your fiscal period setup screen and closing the periods that you no longer want people to post to. Well, in prior versions, of, when you go into this window, you, it only opened halfway. You had to scroll down to see all the periods. So now it opens full screen so you can see all the periods. A couple things in inventory. There's a very helpful inquiry screen called item stock. I bring up an item that has some activity. This screen shows you what your balance or quantity on hand is at any point in time after each transaction. Well, if you've been using GP for many years, this window is gonna have a lot of transactions and it's sometimes difficult to scroll to the bottom. So they've added this date filter. So you can just help narrow down Again, here's, I've got stuff in future dates. So if I just want to see in March of that last year, and you always have to read display after you make any changes on an inquiry, inquiry screen, filters that down. Also, in, in, in most inquiry screens or most any windows of GP, you have a print button. So if you want to send whatever you're viewing on the screen, you can click on print and send that to, to, to the printer. Again, here's another, uh, another area where they're tracking who's doing what. They've added uh, to inventory, they're tracking now who's, who last changed an item. So I probably think, I think the best way to show that is in the smart list. 
I have under my items, I have a list of all my retail items. And I've added the new field who's, who changed that item last. Again, it doesn't tell you what they've changed or when, it's just that's the last person to touch that record. So if I were to go into this uh, fax phone item here and make any kind of change, Save it. I have to refresh my smart list. It shows that I was the last one to change it because I am logged in as the SA user. They've also added the inactive field. Like this field has been there. If I go into item maintenance, this was added, I forget which release, 13 or 2015, I don't remember. They added the field, but you couldn't filter on it in Smart List. Well, now you can. Finally added that to the Smart List. Moving on to payroll. A really handy feature is you now have the ability to reprint pay statements for an entire pay run. You could always reprint, well, not always, but Back a few releases, they added the reprint a pay stub for one check, one pay record. When you come into the payroll check history or check inquiry screen for an employee and you select a check, you can click recreate pay stub. It doesn't look just like the direct deposit earning statement or a check stub, but it's got all the information. So you could do that, but it was one one at a time. Now you can run, like I said, for a whole pay run by going on, on the payroll page under reports. It's under reprint journals. And it's added to this list of reports. Oops, it's in there somewhere. Reprint pay statement. So it's treated just like any other report or re, you know, reprinting a posting journal. Like, Create a report option and you choose audit trail code. If you don't know the audit trail code, you can usually find the right one by the, the posted date. And then we make sure I'm going to the screen, take a look. So now this will print a page for every employee in that pay run. So if you run your payroll, you're on direct deposit and you thought you got all your pay statements printed and later find out the printer jammed after you posted, that's when this will come in handy. Also handy with the payroll process is in the build check screen, they've added a new section here, include additional taxes. That's if you have probably do, employees who have extra withholding for federal, state, or local. Maybe you don't want to include that in a certain run, like if you're going to run a, do a bonus pay, maybe you don't want the extra taxes withheld. You can just uncheck those boxes. I'll discard that. You can also do, this quick assignment was always here where you can assign, quickly assign uh, pay codes, benefits, or deductions to a single employee at a time. Well, now they added a quick assignment, like a mass quick assignment. And that can be found, we go under payroll setup. Let's say we want to assign a new deduction. everybody I have to remember how I do this so I select the deduction oh here it is then there's a go to quick code assignment so this from this screen even though I started from a deduction from well, once I'm in the screen I can assign any of these payroll deduction benefit or any of the HR benefit codes pick the code, and then how do I want to sign it? Just to a certain class of employees, uh, maybe just a certain department, 
So if we put in a department, just say that all the admin people are going to get this deduction. And then once you've entered your ranges, you click Apply Filters. And then it'll filter the list based on your selections here. And then you can mark all. So now once I click on Update, that's going to assign this pay code to all these employees. Another change is if you have it enabled, um, there were certain fields that when you would change it, a little window would pop up and you could select a reason for the change. They've just added that functionality to uh, these date fields over here, the higher date, adjusted higher date, and last day worked. Let's see. That's pretty much the list for 18.2. Like I said, these are just the new features in this last release. For anybody that's on some, some of the older versions, we have documents that contain all the, the new features for the, the releases in between. So if you have any interest, we'd be happy to uh, send that to you. Go back to my, I get back to my PowerPoint and still see that. All right, oh, where to go? All right, let me get caught up. Okay, I think I already discussed this, the upgrade paths, how you can't go directly from 2015 to the latest. Uh, it'll be a double hop from 2015 and older versions, there'll be more jumps in between. Like I said too, um, if you have any interest, what we what we do is when you say you're ready for an upgrade, we will send you a link to a questionnaire so we can gather information about your current, uh, current system, if you're getting a new server, information about that, um, any third-party products you have, and then from that information, we work up an estimate on the number of hours. So we always give you an estimate so you know what you're going to get into. And like I said before, upgrades are so much easier. Um, and the uh, third-party vendors have done a much better job of having all their products ready for new releases as GP makes them available. This is nice, too. There's uh, website you can go to to vote on uh, future ideas. When you go to that web page, it'll show you a whole bunch of uh, suggestions that other people have posted that you can vote on them. Uh, you can see if Microsoft is uh, contemplating putting that into release, it'll, I forget what the, the box will say, under review, I think it is. So the more votes these these ideas get, the better chance they'll be in the future releases. And with them now going to release three times a year, there's, there's a good chance some of those ideas might get, get included. So go out there and, and vote on these things or post your own suggestions. Do we have any questions? Yes, if you have any questions, please post in the chat section. We will uh, make this webinar available on our website within the next few days, so you can always revisit. If there were any of the new features listed I skipped, you can take a look at those or refresh your memory. Uh, okay, here's a question. Uh, are there any new features related to workflows? Yes, there are some uh, security-related workflows. Uh, there's one on uh, adding and editing user security. There's another one for adding new users. And then one each for modifying security roles and tasks. And they've, they've done a lot with workflows in the uh, previous releases as well. That usually, workflows probably have more new features added than anything else. So if you're using workflows, Take a look at those. 
Any other questions? Like I said, the web this webinar will be available on our website. If if in the meantime you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, or email our support support at cssi.com. We'd be happy to help you. We do have another webinar planned for March 18th. It's uh, going to be presented by Gorilla Expense. That is a third-party uh, vendor who provides automated expense integration. We're actually going through an implementation of this right now with a customer, but it's for, uh, like if you have technicians or sales reps or anybody, people out on the road, they can take pictures of receipts, like gas receipts, meal receipts, take a picture of it with their phone and send it uh, right into GP. So it's pretty cool. Join us, take a look at that. And if there are no other questions, we'll end our webinar for today. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.